Welcome to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint from Zero to Hero, Module 4.2, Onboarding via GPO and Local Script. On this video, I will show how you can onboard devices via Local Script, and then I need to say it's not complicated at all. What is more challenging is to build the right configuration to support Grow Policy in order to do the onboarding. Anyway, stay with me and let me show all the steps. Okay, the plan now is to onboard two devices. I have a Windows 10 and a Windows Server 2016. Windows 10, 10, this is just additional number, and 03R is the Server 2016. Uh, here are a few notes just to guide my thoughts. The first thing I want to do is double check on the portal to make sure these servers, they are not onboarded, okay? Keep in mind, Windows 10, 10, and Windows Server 2016, 03. If I go quickly into the portal, yeah, as you can see, I have a few devices already onboarded, 2019, 2012, 2016.05, and 2016.01x are the devices I have at the moment. Those two guys are not here. Okay, now let me go back. And, uh, you know, if you've never done the, the downloading the files before, let me show how you can do that. What I did already to buy a bit of time, I build a kind of, you know, a small infrastructure on my server. In here, if I go to my server, I have already all the files I need on this server. What I did is I created a folder called MDE onboarding. Of course, the name really doesn't matter. If I right click and go to properties, yeah, and then I already shared this file, uh, this folder, sorry. And this is going to be useful, especially later on when I need to do the auto onboarding via Grow Policy. And then what I did, if I go there in here, I have all the files in here. I have the onboarding script if I want to do the server 2012 and 2016 via Grow Policy. I have the, the onboarding script via Grow Policy for Windows 10 is in here. And then I have the local script, if I, as I said before, if I want to on, uh, quickly onboard uh, Windows 10 via script, you know, here is the file, server 2016, 2019. And actually, this is the, the, uh, the client, or the MD client for server 2012 and 2016 is here. Okay, if you are doing that for the first time, the place you need to do, the place you need to go is starting from, from security.microsoft.com. Okay, just go into the portal. Of course, you will need permissions for that. And then go down into sec uh, settings. Sorry, yeah, go to settings here because now is a kind of single portal for different tools. The place I really need to go now is uh, endpoint. Click in there. And then finally, I need to reach onboarding. Click in there. And then as I already showed on my previous video, here is the place where I pick whatever is the operating system. Okay, let's say I need to onboard uh, the Windows 10 and Windows 11. Okay, select there. Now, what is the onboarding method? Let's say I want to onboard via local script. Okay, click in there. And then that's pretty much it. Click on download and the file is there. If I quickly look now into the downloads, yeah, it's a zip file. Right click, let me quickly extract the file in here. And yeah, there you go, it's a CMD file. This is the file, if I double click on any Windows 10 or Windows 11, the device will be onboarded automatically. The good news is there is no password to be typed, there is no user credentials, it means any device around the world, if the, connecti the internet connectivity is working, any device you run that script, that device will be uh, onboarded, onboarded into your tenant, okay? The credentials are kind of, you know, built in into the file. Okay, that's great. Now, if I go back to my file again, and let's say I need to onboard a server 20, let's say 2012 and 2016, click in there. Uh, yeah, for now, I will stick with the local policy as well. And then in here, there are now two components. The MSI file is the kind of MD client and the onboarding package is in there. If I click on the MSI, 
Okay, now it's downloading, and then I need to download as well the 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 uh, CMD file, the script. If I click in there, okay, that's fine. Yeah, the MSI is going to take you know a few seconds. If I go to my folder, yeah, there you go. Okay, this was for Windows 10. This is the new download, and now if I extract that file, it's going to be. I need to extract to a different. Oh, let me just quickly rename this guy here. Otherwise, we will get lost. Okay, this is for let's say Windows 10. Okay, that's fine. Right click and then click on extract in here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Now this is now the file for Server 2012 in 2016 the script and the msi is coming anyway just to buy a bit of time what i did already i've downloaded everything i need into this folder and now i can onboard any version via local script and i have two flavors here for the the grow policy as well okay this is step number one okay now the next thing i want to do is okay this is done that's done okay if you're just wondering let's say you don't have access to the portal and then from the let's say from the client from the endpoint point of view you need to double check if that device has been already onboarded to any md tenant or not uh, i would say quick way but let's say one of the way you can do is the following okay let me dive now into windows 10 10. let me just make sure i get the right device yeah, this is the Windows 10 10. Okay, if I have a quick look into the registry, uh, reg edit. Okay, if I go to the reg uh, editor, click in there, click on yes. Okay, and then let me just start from, from the scratch. If you come from the um, HK local machine, go into software and then dive into Microsoft. And then down here, you should be able to see, yeah, that's a place windows advanced threat protection by the way this used to be the old name when microsoft released this product it used to be called windows advanced threat protection and then eventually in 2022 if i have good memory microsoft renamed to defender for endpoint as you can see there are no many entries on the registry it's pretty much you know blank enough after the onboarding, when I come back and check in here, I will see some more information with the device ID and some other things re uh, re related to the uh, my tenant. Okay, I will leave this open for, for now. Okay, now what I want to do is from this Windows 10, just to kind of, you know, make sure, uh, WinVer, just to kind of quickly double check. Yeah, is a Windows 10. And then from here, I already connected to my domain controller, server 2016.02. And now what I need to do is because I want to onboard via local script, double click into the right folder. Okay, from here now, let me just copy these files to my local machine. Let me just copy this folder in here to my device drive C and then paste. Okay, that's fine. Now just double click. Okay, now let me just run this script. Let me run as a administrator. If I click in there, and then let me just confirm, yes. And then one more, yes. There you go. Yeah, now the onboarding is running. And then in a few seconds, if I check the registry key, I should be able to see some changes. And when it comes to for this device to be presented into the portal, yeah, it can be, as I said, at some stage, it can be anything from a few minutes, like five minutes up to 30 minutes. That has been my, my experience so far. Anyway, kind of the good news, as you can see, the it seems the onboarding worked uh, well. Let me just close this window. Now, if I go back to the registry, and uh, I believe I need to refresh if I refresh, yeah, as you could see, there are now much more information in here. As you can see, onboarded, uh, onboarded info, the sense uh, ID, all the information is here. Yeah, anyway, as I said before, from the client side, this is a good news. It means this device now is onboarded. I will wait a few minutes now before checking the portal uh, to see if the device is fully populated into the portal. Anyway, good news, that is done, this is done, and is fully onboarded. Okay, now let me jump 
Chua Server 2016, and then you perform kind of you know the same steps in order to have a 2016 onboarded. The only difference now from a Server 2016 and Server 2012, I need to run the installation client before I can do the onboarding. Okay, let me jump to Server 2016.03. If I go here, yeah, that's the guy, Windows Server 2016.03. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Anyway, as I said before, the very first step is to run the MD for WS.MSI. It's not too big, it's 138 megs. I believe I can run from here, just double click. Uh, yeah, this is the folder I already downloaded from the domain controller. If I click in there, yeah, now, you know, I, I could run via command line to do a, a um, let's say, an attended installation, but I just want to show how, you know, it works. Anyway, just answer a few questions, click install, and now the system is about, yeah, is installed. Okay, if I click on finish, quickly before I do the onboarding, let me do, let me just go to the default programs. If I click in there, and then eventually click on apps and features, yeah, as you can see, this is what I'm looking for, Windows Defender for Endpoint. Please remember, you need to do that on Server 2016 and Server 2012. You don't need to run the client on 2019. Okay, that step number one is done. Now I need to run the onboarding script. Let me just quickly copy to the local machine in here, paste, okay, and then double click on that folder and I'm looking now to do the onboarding. I have already here downloaded the offboarding if I need to offboard and then eventually, you know, just do some more tests. But anyway, this is the file, double click on the file, click on yes, click in there. Yeah, same story now, the system is checking if the defender for endpoint, the, sorry, if the defender, the local defender is there, is started, and if the defender for endpoint client is already installed. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, the message here saying, yeah, no problem at all. Same story now, if I go quickly to the registry, if I go to reg edit, click in there, and then, yeah, I think I've been been checking that before. Um, just to remind you the full location, HKey local machine, go to software, go to Microsoft, and then go down until you can find, yeah, Windows Advanced Threat Protection. And yeah, one more time, as you can see, the sense ID is there and so on. Yeah, now it's just a quick proof the server is onboarded. Okay, that's done. Let me just quickly review here my, uh, oops, not that one. Let me quickly review my notes from here. Okay, yeah, I done that, installation. Okay, now let me go back to the portal to see if the two devices are already populated. Uh, I might need to stop the video to give a bit of time, but let me check if they are already there. Okay, if I come to here, let me do a quick refresh, click in there. And then let's see how lucky we are if the devices are here already. I'm looking for Windows 10 uh, dash 10 and Windows Server 2016-03, if I have a good memory. Okay, it's coming. Let's see. Okay, it's a bit slow. Okay. Okay, I think we got it there. Oh yeah, brilliant. As you, as you can see, yeah, I didn't have, uh, you know, to wait much. My server 2016.03 is in here and my uh, Windows 10-10 .10 is in here as well. There, there is a small difference here. The other servers, they are domain join into my local Active Directory. This is why I can see the full name, server 2019.04 jacksonfeldenlabs.com. These two servers, because they are standalone or they are kind of you know, working that work group, I don't have the domain, but you know, it really doesn't matter. Now, if I click on, let's say on my fresh uh, server, if I click in there, of course, now is going to take time for Microsoft to populate all the, um, all the, you know, the timeline to populate the security recommendations. You know, if I click in here, 
uh, this is all about the threat and vulnerability management. And for the moment, there is no data at all. If I go to software inventory, yeah, for sure, you know, it's too early for me to get any information. Now the, the, the system is working on the background to understand everything that is installed on that device, in my case, my server 2016. And then if I wait, now it can take a little bit longer, you know, it could be two hours, three hours. And if you want to make sure everything is collected and everything is populated, I would advise you to wait uh, at, at least 24 hours to get all the information, including missing, you know, missing patches, discovered vulnerabilities and so on. Okay, I, I really need to wait now much more time, a few hours or up to 24 hours to have all the information in here. But anyway, at least the devices now I wanted to show how to onboard devices via local policy. That is actually is not local script, sorry. As you could see, it's not really too complicated. Okay, let's keep moving. Now the next challenge is to onboard server 2012.05 via Grow Policy. Of course, if you have dozens or hundreds of devices, you really don't want to go device by device and run the local script. Let's automate now via Grow Policy. In order to do that, of course, I had to create a set of configuration to support the Grow Policy onboarding. Okay, starting with the server, as I already showed before, what I already did, I created a folder called MD, onboard, uh, MD onboarding, sorry. And then from there, now very important, is the folder I created GPO Server 2012-2016. And then the file I really need is the onboarding script located in this folder. Second thing, of course, that folder is already shared. Okay, just want to make sure if I click on shared and then yeah, it's fully shared and is available for administrators to have access to that folder. Okay, let me cancel that. Okay, next step is to double check the groups because the way I decided to do is I want to control what are the servers to be onboarded. And then to do that, I'm controlling via group membership and group policy permissions. Let me show how what, what I did. If I go in here, click on Active Directory, Users and Computers, click in there. And then eventually I created a couple of groups to support my, my implementation. One of them is the MD server 2012-2016 onboarding. Let me double click on that, click on members. And then as you can see, up to now, the server I'm looking to onboard is the server 2012-5 is not here. Let me do now, let me just add that server. It's a little bit tricky because before I search for the server, make sure you click on object uh, types, click in there, select computers, click OK, and now should be fine. If I search for server, click in there, I should be able to see server 2012, yeah, server 2012.05. Click on OK and click OK. OK, and then finally one more OK. That's brilliant. Of course, you know, this is just my way to control the onboarding. You can do, you know, different methods by moving servers to different OUs and so on. OK, that's uh, job done. Now, the next thing I need to do is to have a look on the Grow Policy. If I click on Tools and then Grow Policy Management, click in there. Here, yeah, as you can see, I have assigned the onboarding grow policy, I'm calling MD servers 2012, 2016 onboarding to the corp servers. Okay. But again, I don't want every single server under that OU to be onboarded automatically. I, I, I want to have a better control. This is why uh, when I created this policy, the first thing I did is I clicked on delegation and then I click on uh, advanced. And then from here, if you create a grow policy for the first time, you will see a set of permissions. And then there is a group called authenticated users that gets read and write, uh, sorry, read and applied permission. That makes any server that is under that corp servers to be onboarded automatically. And then on my design, I didn't want that. This is why I removed 
the authenticated users group and then I added my group, the MD servers 2016 onboarding. And then this gives me a better control in regards when I want to onboard a bunch of servers. Could be 10 servers, 15. I just need to add those servers into the group. And then of course, when I added the MD server 2012-2016 group, okay, I gave read permissions and apply permissions over this group policy. Okay, that's from the kind of permissions point of view. Now let me show the configuration I did in order to support the onboarding via Grow Policy. If I click on Edit, click in there, and then the place I need to go, let me just maximize here, the place I need to go is Preferences, it's not Policies anymore, Preferences, and then Expand Control Panel, expand that, and then in here, a couple of things I need to focus on. Um, well, let me click on here on the, on the left, is schedule tasks. And then as you can see, I have already my schedule task there. Otherwise, you know, what I did already was right click new and then I create a new task. This task actually is not too complicated. You know, double click. What I did is a couple of things. First, of course, I had to provide a name. And then here I just kept the default configuration make sure run, you know, whatever the user is logged on or not, make sure that is uh, clicked and make sure you select as well, run with highest privilege. Okay, that's job done. Next thing I did was uh, click on actions, click in there. And then of course, here is a place where you point the system to run the onboarding script. And then as you know, the first time what I did, click, I uh, click the new, and then here I paste the full path. The full path is in here. My server 2012, sorry, my server 2016 02, and then the folder you are already familiar, the MD onboarding, and then the subfolder GPO server 2012, 2016, and finally the, you know, the exact, the, uh, the exact uh, uh, script to do the onboarding. That's, you know, what I did. And then when it comes to conditions, yeah, I just kept the default, you know, to be honest, settings, I kept everything, you know, as a default, you can always, you know, double click, uh, double check, sorry. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I did. A few changes on the general, and then very important, you know, to point to the right location where the onboarding script is located. That's pretty much it. Okay, let me just save that configuration. And this is what I've done from the grow policy point of view. Now, to actually, you know, have the server hopefully fully onboarded, at the moment, if I click on computers, yeah, the server 2012.05 was uh, joined into this domain, into the default location, computers. And then, uh, as you already know, in order to have that server automatically onboarded via Grow Policy, what I need to do now is to move this server into the location where the onboarding script has been assigned. Let me click in there, the onboarding uh, Grow Policy, not script, sorry. Okay, let me click on, okay. Okay, I think now everything looks good. I have the server 2012.05 into the right OU. Uh, I have the server already added into the right group that gives permission over the grow policy. And now I, I can do two things. First, I could restart the server in order to get the, the new grow policy, or I could jump into that server and then run a quick GP update. Okay, if I open up the, the PowerShell. Before that, let me, I can't remember if I already showed that. Let me just uh, quickly go to the reg edit and to make sure the server, yeah, as you can see, if I go to, uh, you know, that key, even the, um, the Windows Advanced Threat Protection key is not here at all. Yeah, it means, you know, that server, this server definitely is not onboarded. Okay, now let me just force the, um, the the grow policy refresh. Let me just make a little bit bigger in here. Okay, yeah, now it looks better. Okay, GP update force. Okay, now what I'm doing is 
if you are familiar with Grow Policy and you have been managing servers already, you know what I'm talking about. If you are new, the GP Update Force, basically as a kind of the name suggests, is force it forces the servers to talk to the domain controller and refresh any possible new Grow Policy or to refresh any old Grow Policy with a new configuration. Okay, now it's going to take a few minutes in order for the grow policy to process, in order to run that script, and then in a few minutes we should be able to see that server 2012.05 into the portal. Just to buy a bit of time, I'm going to pause the video and I will come back in a few seconds, uh, I will return when the server is onboarded. Okay, a few minutes have passed, now let me double check again. Let me start with the registry, uh, edit. let me see if there is any difference now from the local registry. If I go up, up to Windows Advanced Threat Protection, okay, yeah, that's good news. If you could remember a few seconds ago, it was pretty much empty. Now I can see all the sense uh, ID and everything. Okay, from the client point of view, it looks good. Now let me go to the portal again. If I go over devices, uh, we should be able to see now the server 2012-05 onboarded. As I said, it can take you know, a couple of minutes. And yeah, here is the server. Server 2012-05 fully onboarded on uh, MDE via Grow Policy. I need to tell you something. Uh, it was not part of the automation for me when it comes to the, the the client installation. Please remember server 2012, we need to install that MSI. And then what I did before is I already installed the Defender for Endpoint Client in this server. Okay, if you are, if you want to do a fully automated and then you need to do two parts. First, to automate the onboarding script and second, to automate the, the client itself. And please remember, you need first to deploy the client and then do the onboarding. Uh, okay, that's done. Yeah, especially if you are kind of new into the Grow Policy world, a really nice tool is the rsop.msc. This is a quick way for you to get a report. If I go back to my server, the, my domain controller, sorry, if I go back to, to here, as you can see, there are a few grow policies. In the main grow policies, where I'm kind of you now pushing all the, the MD settings to all devices, is the MD general settings. Now, if I go back to my server, to my, uh, yeah, sorry, to my uh, server 2012. If I click in here and then search for rsop.msc, and then it's a really good way for me to get a full report, especially for me to double check if the MD settings I have set into the grow policies, they, they have been applied for this uh, server. Okay, let me just quickly maximize. And then in here, if I go over the administrative templates, double click, and then Microsoft Defender Antivirus, double click. And yeah, here is the confirmation. All the key settings like turn off Microsoft Defender Antivirus. Of course, I don't want to turn off. This is why I've set as a disable. And then I want to configure the detection for potentially unwanted application is enabled. And as you can see, all those settings are coming from my general, the MD general settings and so on. But anyway, what I really wanted to show in this video is how you can build a configuration on your domain controller in order to deploy, uh, sorry, in order to onboard any device. It can be Windows 10, Windows 11, servers 2012, 2019, or 2016. You just need to make sure you have the right grow policy configuration and the grow policy is pointing to the right script in order to do the onboarding. Anyway, this is what I wanted to show on my onboarding via GPO and local script video. If you enjoyed this video, please give a quick like, subscribe my channel, follow me on LinkedIn and get ready for the next module. Thanks for watching.